Today I will be reviewing the pound for pound heavyweight that is the Mantis V2. Now I'm sure many of you watching this are already familiar with this scooter as are we at Electric Scooter Insider. It's been around for over a year now but with the advent of some popular performance scooters including the Mantis King GT, Apollo Phantom V3 and Splash Titan I wanted to see how it stacked up against this ever growing competition. Voted by thousands of our readers as one of the best electric scooters of 2022 the Mantis V2 remains a challenge to competitors that isn't easily met. Fusing best in class performance, handling and ferocity, this is a scooter to be admired. Typically a model with dual 60 volt 1000 watt motors, 25 amp sine wave controllers and an 18.2 amp hour battery will set you back well over $2000. The illustrious Mantis however gives you a Rolls Royce level of performance for the price of a 2001 Toyota Corolla. In this review we'll take a look at all that the Mantis V2 has to offer. First I'll run through its design and features then I'll share the results from my performance test where you'll see how it stacks up against the current market and to finish I'll give my verdict as well as some alternatives so without further ado let's jump in. The handlebars which measure 24 inches remain wide enough to ensure that you always feel in control while the heavy stem promises excellent handling when it comes to turning and manoeuvring. It also benefits from having a deck to handlebar height that measures 41 inches combined with the wide cockpit and confidence inspiring stem is an ideal choice for tall riders over 6 foot. The addition of ergonomically shaped rubber hand grips significantly improves tactility too. The V1 for all of its strengths was blind by foam grips which were prone to wear and tear and just felt a little bit tacky. Elsewhere the handlebars retain the clean and simple aesthetic that we've come to love from Mantis models. On each side you have your brake levers while on the right you'll find the display. I would have liked to have seen the trigger style throttle jettison for a superior thumb throttle especially because its positioning is a little cumbersome when it comes to pulling on the brake lever. Aside from this minor gripe the display holds no real surprises you can keep tabs on all of your key riding stats while it's clear and bright enough to glance at even in direct sunlight. Finishing the cockpit there's a handy button pad on the left for controlling your lights, horn and new turn signals and it's here where the Mantis V2 ups the ante compared to its predecessor the V1. This time around you have a bright high mounted headlight for improved visibility. The addition of turn signals is a real plus too. Not enough scooters come with them which is scandalous really because they significantly increase the safety of riding through urban areas. The signals can be easily controlled and flash at both the front and rear of the deck. And that's not all, the V2 comes with deck embedded button lights that flash when you brake. But the real piece de resistance of the lighting setup is the LED strips that line the underside of the deck. White and super bright they afford both swag and functionality when the sun goes down. Overall the Mantis V2 has one of the best lighting packages of all the electric scooters that I've reviewed. It also has one of the best decks. It's long, wide and thanks to its rubber coating exceptionally a grippy. With 20 by 8.25 inches of available foot space not including the kick plate which has an extra 6.5 inches there's plenty of room to adopt a riding stance that best suits your riding style. Combined with the 10 inch pneumatic tyres that deliver oodles of traction, ground cover and manoeuvrability they work in perfect harmony with the refined suspension to cushion you from shocks and vibrations synonymous with city streets and off-road trails. The deck is also capable of supporting up to 265 pounds of rider weight meaning that the vast majority of riders can enjoy its many qualities. When testing the scooter I weighed roughly 190 pounds including my helmet and safety gear so I can confidently say that it will deliver an excellent level of performance for riders around this weight. Based on my test however I can see the Mantis performing admirably for riders up to £230. This is a testament to the scooter's durability. The sleek yet rugged aluminium frame and stem could withstand a hurricane but this doesn't come at the cost of nimbleness. While the V2 shares an almost identical build to the V1, the new IPX5 water resistance rating, extended rear fender and improved headlight add to an already reliable scooter that cuts no corners when it comes to ensuring great build quality. The cable management meanwhile is satisfyingly inconspicuous with 
with all the wiring threaded neatly out of sight. In short, it delivers the durability required for everyday riding. Now, the only area of the V2's design that's subpar to the rest of its build is the clunky collar clamp folding mechanism. Compared to the likes of the Mantis King GT's simple locking lever, it's fairly cumbersome and requires you to tighten one clamp first before tightening the other and so on until you achieve an all around tight fit. The mechanism does however eliminate stem wobble making the V2 feel rock solid. There's also the latch on the back of the handlebars that slides under the hook at the rear of the deck. Weighing 65 pounds however you're not going to want to lug this up a flight of stairs. So that is what the Mantis V2 has to offer in the way of its design and features but more importantly, how did it perform in my test and how does it shape up against the current market of electric scooters? Well, let's take a look. Equipped with dual 60 volt, 1000 watt motors, this wolf in sheep's clothing can muster a peak power output of 3000 watts and a top speed of 40 miles per hour. This performance leaves all other electric scooters in the sub $1,750 class choking on dust. What sets the Mantis apart though is that it remains extremely stable when riding fast. Thanks to the evenly distributed weight of the frame, everything from the stem to the chassis feels balanced. Paired with its well damped suspension, vibrations are softened and the tires maintain traction at all times to make it feel secure underfoot. Digging deeper, I applied a $500 bracket around the V2's price tag and it revealed seven comparable scooters, including popular models from Vala, Apollo and Inikim, and there was just one, which was the Vala Eagle one, that matched the Mantis for top speed. However, the Vala only has dual 52 volt 1000 watt motors while the Mantis sports more powerful 60 volt 1000 watt motors. The result is a 33% slower acceleration rate meaning that the Mantis is a true winner. Now when it comes to acceleration it explodes out of the blocks. It can hit 50 miles per hour in a whiplashing 2.1 seconds and 25 miles per hour in just 4.7. This wipes the floor with all the scooters in its price class. Against the models that are recommend as alternatives, which include the Splash Titan and Mantis King GT. It beats the former, but as to be expected, it's slightly slower off the mark than its big bro. And this is because the Mantis King GT has bigger 60 volt 1100 watt motors and more powerful 30 amp sine wave controllers. Nevertheless, the Mantis V2 still has a huge amount of power and with that comes extraordinarily good hill climbing. It all comes down to the alchemy that exists between those 1000 watt motors. The V2 has enough torque to climb steep slopes, leaving you with a package purpose made for those San Francisco peaks. But of course, riding fast up and down hills requires strong brakes. Equipped with zoom hydraulic discs, you'll come to a complete stop from 15 miles per hour in an impressive two meters. To put this into perspective, it promises a stopping distance that is shorter than the rest of the scooters in its price class while it also outperforms the scooters that I recommend as alternatives where the Mantis King GT took 2.1 meters to stop and the Splash Titan took 2.4 meters. Next up, let's take a look at range. But before we dive into the results from my range test, it's important to note that the Mantis V2 comes in two variants. One with an 18.2 amp hour battery and the other with 24.5 amp hours. The 18.2 amp hour battery has a maximum range of 33 miles when ridden slowly and 28 miles when ridden fast. The 24.5 amp hour battery on the other hand is of a slightly higher quality being LG and has a maximum range of 45 miles when ridden slow or 38 miles when ridden fast. Comparing the Mantis V2 to the seven other models that sit within a range of $500 it finishes with the wooden spoon. However not all is as it seems. If we consider real world mileage it's a top performer where it shares third place with the Apollo Phantom. The winner of the comparison is the Inakim Ox Super and while its ride quality is on par with the Mantis V2, it only has a single 800 watt motor meaning it's considerably slower. With this in mind, what at first seemed like a loss 
for the Mantis is actually a win. Not only does it have viciously fast motors and excellent ride quality, but its efficient controllers ensure that its real world range remains competitive. Talking about ride quality, it's a big yes from me. I've already praised the juicy 10 inch tires that produce excellent traction and shock absorbing proficiencies, while the wide handlebars, heavy stem and large deck are a noteworthy supporting cast. But the stars of the show here are the swing arm suspension, well balanced frame and their newly introduced sine wave control. Controllers. Thanks to the well calibrated damping of the springs, they aren't bouncy, meaning they strike the perfect shock absorbing profile. Using a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 is extremely stiff and 10 is extremely soft, I scored the Mantis V2 suspension an 8. There's also the 6.25 inches of ground clearance, which not only gives the scooter enough of a gap to roll over challenging obstacles such as curbs, tree roots and rocky outcrops, but allows for the swing arms to pivot for a deep amount of travel. The controllers are huge leap forward too, especially when compared to the square wave ones found on the previous model. Accelerating through the gears now feels silky smooth instead of jittery and controlled instead of erratic. It's like rolling a dimmer dial and gradually increasing the brightness of a light, whereas previously all you had was a simple on off switch. Combined with the even distribution of weights across the frame, the Mantis V2 is one of the only scooters in its class that has a perfect equilibrium. As a result, it achieves best in-class ride quality. So is the Mantis V2 a good value for money and is it still a competitive scooter? Well, that's like asking if water is wet or if fire is hot. The combination of performance and features stand the test of time and belong to a scooter that should cost you far more than its affordable price tag. And while its price may have played a large part in its exploding popularity, its suitability for all types of terrain is also a key. For admirers of the Mantis range, the V2 represents an excellent choice. Pros include best in class performance, it has excellent handling, it's fast with a rapid acceleration rate, has great ride quality, the dual spring and swing arm suspension have good damping, it has all terrain riding credentials, powerful hydraulic brakes, it's capable of producing extreme amounts of torque to scale steep inclines, the Simo controllers deliver a smooth constant flow of power, the lighting rig is excellent with turn signals and deck LEDs, the extended rear fender prevents splashback and and it has an IPX5 water resistance rating. Cons include the folding mechanism is clunky and the finger throttle isn't ergonomic. Now to help you in your search to find the perfect electric scooter, I've pulled together two alternatives that you may want to consider. Kicking things off, we have the Mantis King GT. It's the V2's big bro and it's a great choice if range and all terrain riding are important to you. It has more powerful 60 volt, 1100 watt motors, a 12% faster acceleration rate, a 32% larger battery which equates to 23 more miles of maximum range, superior adjustable hydraulic suspension and terrain agnostic tyres. It also has a far more efficient one-click folding mechanism, an ergonomic thumb throttle and an advanced TFT display, but it costs considerably more and is nine pounds heavier. Next, we have the Splash Titan. The best way to think about this model is like a budget version of the Mantis V2. It's a lot cheaper, has terrain agnostic tires and a more efficient folding mechanism, but it has less powerful 52 volt, 1000 watt motors, a 12% slower acceleration rate. The throttle response isn't as smooth. The deck is significantly shorter and it supports 45 pounds at less rider weight. Plus it doesn't have turn signals. Now to find out more about any of these alternatives or the Mantis V2, click on the links in the description. If you found value in this video, please sub to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.